Hello, welcome. This is James M Zero JCQ. Uh, just here to give you an update on the batteries that I use for SOTA operation. Uh, this seems to be quite a common uh, question that I'm asked about. Uh, a lot of ham seem to have this question. You know, what what battery are you using? What do you find that works best? Uh, through over the years for experimenting, I, I've settled on these uh, these LiPo batteries here. Uh, quite similar to LiPo batteries. Uh, they're used traditionally, I believe, for uh, for for these remote controlled cars. Uh, but they've managed to find their way into the ham community and they're proving to be uh, very popular. Uh, the, the one massive advantage they have over LiPo batteries is they're, they're a lot less prone to uh, to catching fire spontaneously, which is definitely a plus point and uh, definitely a negative for the, the LiPos, which other, other than that provide very good performance. Um, so just looking, we've got two batteries here. Uh, you can see this one is a uh, 4.2 amp hour battery. Uh, it's what does it say on the front? A high discharge life battery, and it runs at 13.2 volts. Uh, it's not actually being marked, but you can see, if I can point to it accurately, the four cell, yeah, four cell there, 13.2 volts, which is perfect for most uh, amateur rigs, uh, especially for the KX3 as well, which is what I, I predominantly use when I'm out portable. Uh, if you try and run that using, say, a uh, 12 volt slab battery, you tend to find that uh, you can't well you just simply can't run it at full power you have to drop down to five watts out maximum and the, the discharge from a slab battery also tends to be quite sudden as well so you get voltage drops pretty soon after whereas these these bad boys tend to run for quite some time at the you know the 13 volts at least before and it only really tends to drop off uh once the battery is almost depleted it is very stable and then just at the end it completely goes off the cliff which brings me on to these nifty little devices that I've got here. These have just turned up today and this was uh, a kind of uh, some feedback that I got actually on a blog post that I wrote about the batteries that I use for, for portable operation. And some people were saying, yeah, you have to be careful that you don't run the batteries completely flat because you can cause lasting damage to them and they never kind of recover that capacity again. Uh, so the, the general consensus is just keep an eye on the uh, the voltage. So I've got these little nice little meters that came through from banggood.com, uh, which is a useful little site for, for all these little things, bits and bobs that, that you know us amateur radio enthusiasts tend to find quite useful. Uh, they're about three pounds each. Uh, I got two of them, because obviously I've got two, uh, two LifePo batteries. I got two spare as well, just because they're a couple of Weird, and I thought, you know, in the future I'll probably get some other batteries that I might want to monitor as well. Uh, they've got a really, really long range on them in terms of the voltage that they measure. You're probably not going to be able to see any of that, but uh, the, yeah, no, it's not focusing on that. Let's see if I can focus it. There we go. So the the voltage that it can measure is anything from uh, 0 0.5 up to 36 volts. Uh, so so it's got a wide range. It also it also works on a whole range of batteries. Uh, once again, if I refocus, will it focus? Uh, kind of. Yeah. So so you can use these on lipos, uh, lions. Not too sure what that that next one is. Uh, and then ultimately the the lipo batteries at the end, which is what I'm using here. So they're, they're quite wide ranging. Uh, they work up to eight cells. Uh, I'm just using. Uh, what am I using? I guess six cells or six in series. Uh, so yeah, yeah, nifty little devices, couple of quid, and we'll we'll ensure the longevity of the uh, the batteries. Let's refocus. There we go. Perfect. So yeah, this is the the one I tend to use for for kind of shorter operate well, not shorter but but low power QRP operations. So if I'm using my KX3 or the Yaesu 817, I use this this battery here. I, I found it sufficient. I've run pile ups for for like four hours on it, and it's just worked flawlessly. This one's been out on a number of uh, SOTA activations. I must have taken out portable probably about seventy plus times now. Uh, all around Europe as well. It's not just been in the UK, this one. So it has traveled. It's still still standing up pretty well, actually, to be fair. Uh, what else to mention? Oh yeah, the Anderson power pole connectors. So you can see I fitted these uh, to, to the LifePay battery. So they don't come as standard. Uh, this is something that I've added because I like the Anderson power poles because they're pretty foolproof in terms of polarity. You don't need to worry about that too much. This is my other battery. 
this is the one that I tend to use for my more kind of QRO operations. And by QRO, I mean 50 watts to 100 watts using like a Yaesu 857 or, or equivalent. And it's 8.4 amp hours. So it's, it's about, well, it's literally double the capacity and also double the size and weight as well. So I don't tend to be lugging this up to, to big mountains for, for hours and hours. Uh, but, but I will use it if I'm, you know, walking a, a, a shortish distance. So yeah, still very portable, uh, much more portable than a slab. Uh, and I have used uh, slabs before and uh, they're just very, very heavy in comparison and bulkier as well. And the, the voltage is just simply too low to run a rig at full output or with any kind of stability as well. So yeah, uh, I tried to keep this a short video, but it's running into almost uh, five and a half minutes, almost six minutes. So I'll cut it off there. Wish you 73s. If you want to know anything else, just let me know in the comments.